A company named Focus sent me their new Odin 5 3D printer, and I'm going to go over the pros and cons of this printer so you can be better informed on your purchasing decisions if you plan on getting one. So let's get started. As you might have been able to tell, this comes in a really nice looking box that looks like it'd be something you'd just pick off the shelf in a store. And compared to other printers that just come in a basic cardboard box with black inked printing, this is much nicer looking on the outside. But honestly, the outside packaging really doesn't matter, seeing that you're most likely just going to throw this away anyways. So let's see how well it's actually packed in here, and if the printer actually works as intended. And from the looks of it, it's tightly packed and pretty easy to get out of the box. And it does come with a 250 gram roll of PLA+. Plus which is very nice to have on hand, seeing if this is your first printer, you're not going to have spools of filament laying around, and you can start using it right away. Inside the accessory box, we have a quick start guide, along with a warranty card, because this printer actually comes with a 12-month warranty, along with a full user manual. Also some end caps, a basic power cord with the proper plug for my area, one of the smallest spool holders I've ever seen, a short USB cable, all the T-nuts and bolts you need for the machine, some replacement ribbon cables, this little needle thing to unclog your nozzle if that happens, every tool you would need for this printer, two 0.4 replacement nozzles that happen to be the really long volcano hot end version, so that's very interesting, a non-sharpened scraper, an SD card with a USB converter, and the rest of the spool holder. And last but not least, the little clippers that come with almost every 3D printer. But with all that out of the way, let's get the printer out of the box and out of its padding. And as you can tell, it has a decent amount of foam around it, which is a very welcome sight, seeing that these can get damaged in shipping. And it seems to be a high quality foam, so it's not going to fall apart, along with everything being really tightly packed. So I just need to cut off this plastic wrap and remove any additional foam. And with all that stuff gone, all you really need to do is fold the gantry up, and we're going to put in four bolts to basically lock it in place. And like I showed before, this comes with all the tools needed, but I'm going to be using a hand drill. The only other thing you have to attach to this printer is the spool holder, which is just two bolts and two T-nuts. With all of that secured in place, we just need to line up the X part of this and turn it, and it will lock in place. Using the cutters that came with the printer, I'm going to cut the zip ties and plug in my ribbon cables. The one up here is tucked behind the gantry, so you just need to slide it up and plug it in. Those little end caps cover up these spots on either side. You don't have to put them here, but you can if you want to. When it comes to the bed, we need to remove these little metal clips to get it off so we can remove any of the protective layers on it. But as you might be able to see, these clips are really tight on here. So getting them off was a little difficult. But anyways, I can remove the plastic off the build plate to reveal this matte-like finish that it has on it. I'm also going to remove this one on the aluminum bed, seeing that, that it needs to come off, and I've forgotten to do this on past printers before. With all that removed, I can put the bed back on. And we can address the first problem with this printer, which are these little metal clips. And they are way too tight for this, for one. And two, they scrape on the bottom part of the build surface, which will eventually rub away and short out the bed, which is very dangerous. So I'm not going to be using them, and I'm going to replace them with some binder clips. But anyways, let me get this printer plugged in and turned on. And then I'm just going to go into the settings and preheat the nozzle so I can load some filament into it. You can't manually put your filament into the hot end, so you have to load and unload it using the touchscreen, which is pretty simple once you have everything up to temp. You just kind of push the button and it'll pull it through. And once it does, you'll see filament start coming out of the hot end. And since we're on the topic of the hot end, this printer comes with a direct drive system, meaning that all the drive gears and everything are all inside of the hot end assembly. So more or less, it is pulling your filament into the hot end instead of pushing it in like a Bowdoin style setup. This allows you to print with flexible materials along with just keeping everything more compact. This particular printer also has a filament runout sensor built into the hot end assembly, which I haven't actually seen before, but I think it's a really good idea. Sadly, this printer doesn't have auto bed leveling, but it does have assisted bed leveling. It also has a port where where you could put a BL touch into it, but it doesn't come with one. But anyways, the assisted bed leveling will basically move the print head over to certain spots on the build plate, and you can manually tension the bed with the little knobs on the bottom. And I'm just using a normal piece of printer paper cut down to a manageable size, 
and I just move the bed up until the paper is a little bit pinched between everything, but not completely stuck so I can't move it. And repeat this process on every point until all of them have the same resistance on the paper. So with everything all set up, now I can put my SD card into this and start printing my first test file. On the touchscreen, you just go to print and it'll have a ton of files in it. If you just navigate down, you'll find the test model. This is a pre-sliced file that I have no idea what the settings are, but it does have a brim and it doesn't take that long to actually print. And more or less, this is a quick way to see if your printer is working properly. It finished with no problems and I can just pull it off the bed and the brim should just snap right off of it as well. So overall, it looks like it came out perfectly. So I'm going to switch over to a different filament from Matter Hackers, which is their Build Series PLA in silk purple. I really like the look of the silk PLAs, and on video, they really do not hide any blemishes. If anything, they make them look worse. So you'll be able to see any little spot that goes wrong on these prints. So when I was looking at the specs for this printer, I noticed something kind of weird. It has a max print speed of 300 millimeters per second, which is really fast for this kind of printer. And other printers that are very similar to this design only boast about 120 to 150, and no one prints at that speed. Due to all the artifacts it's going to add to your print, and you're going to be lacking your heating and cooling due to how fast you're moving. So I thought, why not try it out? I'm going to start with the default setting from the slicer that came with this printer, which is only 40 millimeters per second, and then work my way up from 70, 90, and then 300. All printing the same little benchy model at the same layer height of 0.2 millimeters. And I'm not going to be messing with the jerk settings or anything like that, which means this probably won't even peak out at its 300 millimeters per second due to just not having enough room to get up to speed before needing to slow down. But we'll see how everything does and if this speeds it up or if there's any difference whatsoever. And here's a quick side by side of the 300 millimeters versus the 70 millimeters moving in real time. And as you can clearly see, the 300 millimeters per second is moving faster, which is not really a big surprise. And after hours of printing, here's everything all done. I made sure to label everything with its speed and how long it actually took. And for the last 300 millimeter per second one, I changed the minimum layer time to two seconds. So this is our first one at 40 millimeters per second, and it took an hour and 47 minutes. It looks pretty good. There's a little bit of weird blemishes on the side of the boat, but other than that, everything else came out pretty much perfect. As for the 70 millimeters per second one, it printed about 21 minutes faster, but looks almost identical to the first one. Besides the bottom being a little too squished, seeing that the level was a little off and our nozzle was too close. And the 90 millimeters per second one looks just as good as others, printing about three minutes faster. So I'm starting to get diminishing returns on speeding it up, which I could have lowered the minimum layer time on this and it probably would have sped it up a bit more. So this is the first 300 millimeter per second one, and you can see that there's a large scar on the side where the Z-seam would be. But overall, it was only three minutes faster than the last one, being an hour and 20 minutes. But this also was with a 10 second minimum layer time. Overall though, it does look pretty good. And last up is a 300 millimeter per second, but with only a two second minimum layer time. And this shaved the time down to an hour and nine minutes total. And as you can see, it has some retraction problems on the side of the boat, and the smokestack is a little weird on the Z-seam and kind of melty. I'm sure with better settings and more tuning, I can get these to work a lot better. But honestly, I didn't want to dig too much into that right now, but maybe later on I'll check out some more fast printing like this and actually mess with more settings. So after all that, is this printer worth the $300 price tag that it has? Well, let me compare it directly to another printer that is in the same price point and same build volume. This is going to be the Ender 3 V2. So the Ender 3 V2 comes as kind of a kit and you have to assemble it. So if you're not very handy with using tools and putting something together, it might not be the best thing for you. I'm not saying that it's hard by any means, but I know people have complained about having to assemble these. And the Odin 5, as you've seen, goes together in six bolts and two ribbon cables. And then just level it and you're good to go. The Odin 5 also has two Z lead screws when the Ender 3 V2 only has one. And one of the bigger selling points to me at least is the Odin 5 has a direct drive system when the Ender 3 V2 has a Bowden setup. 
And don't get me wrong, the Bodum setups do work, I just prefer the direct drives. So I'm not trying to talk down on Creality's products whatsoever, I actually own 5 of their Ender 3 printers. But to fit my needs, I had to upgrade them, which means changing out their main board, their screen, converting them over to direct drive, and adding a BL touch to them, along with an all-metal Microswiss hotend. On top of all that, I had to spend the time to put all this onto the machine and go through troubleshooting any problems. So that's a total cost of a little over $400 plus tax. So if the Odin 5 was available at the time when I did all this, I would have just bought those instead and put an auto bed leveling sensor on them. My only real concerns with the Odin 5 are the bed clips that were kind of digging into the heating element, which could be a problem, but as you saw, easily fixed with binder clips, and the ribbon cables, seeing that if they go bad and you can't find replacements for them, you're kind of out of luck. And over time, they will go out, seeing that ribbon cables aren't really meant to bend all that much. But only time's going to tell with this. And honestly, before actually using this printer and seeing what it can do, I thought it was just going to be some gimmicky Ender 3 clone that wasn't much better or even worse than just a typical Ender 3 that can fold. And I was completely wrong. And from the looks of it so far, this is going to be my go-to printer for fast prototyping, just due to how easy it is to use and its print quality is actually really good. But I don't want to go on and on about this and this video is pretty much over. So if I have any problems with it in the future, I will make sure to make a new video or update the pinned comment in this video just so people can know and stay updated on if there's any problems. I'll make sure to leave links to everything I talked about in this video in the description below. If you did find this video to be helpful whatsoever, leave a like. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment. A big thanks to all my Patreon supporters for helping support the channel. And if you want to be alerted to when I upload new videos, subscribe to my channel. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!